Welcome to the Layer Storage tutorial. This is the script's user interface. There are three parts. This one in the middle is the group panel. It's where your groups are. You can see what's inside them with this little triangle, but more on that later. This part on the bottom left is where your group actions are. Here you can control the group's visibility in the timeline as well as in the comp. You can show or hide, solo, shy, and select the group contents. A special one is up here, where you can isolate a group, which is basically the reverse operation of shy. But I will cover all of this later. The bottom right is where you can manage the groups. You can refresh the script, add layers to a group, create a new group, and remove layers as well as groups. The info button up here opens a new window where you can get infos about your license, you can check for updates, or open our online help at AE Scripts. The script is dockable, so you can click here and drag and dock it anywhere you want. I personally put it next to the timeline. As you might know, groups are connected with your project. So if you open up the script, you have two options. You can either start by creating a new group or search the project for a group someone has already created. It would then load all the existing groups so you can continue to work with them. But let's assume that there are no groups in this project. So start by creating the first group and give it a name. So if I wanted to add all the blue layers to this group, I would select them and hit this plus button. Now they're in the group. You can hide the contents with this little triangle. And now you can start working with the group. The whole point of this script is to make you faster and have a better overview. On the left, this is where you do it. These three buttons are toggle buttons. That means if you click them, their effect will stay there until you untick them. You can solo and unsolo, shy and unshy, and make them invisible or visible. The select button is the only regular button. That means if you hit it, it will select the contents of the group. If you're working in some other comp and you want to select a group, it will automatically make the comp active. What that means is, if I'm for example here and I want to select all the blue layers, it will open the comp that the group is in. So you can use this like as a shortcut. You can define different view settings for each group. So if I make another one and give it different view settings, you should see how these toggle buttons work. You can, for example, make all the blue layers invisible while soloing all the purple ones. And these settings will even stay there when you reopen the project. If I make changes to the view settings outside of the script, I can apply them again by, by holding Alt or Option and clicking on the group. Also, the buttons get grayed out if the operation is not possible. For example, if I make a group invisible, I obviously can't solo them. On to this button up here. This is the isolate button. What it does is it isolates a group inside the timeline. So if I isolate the blue layers, all the other layers will disappear from the timeline until I click the button again. Pretty much like a reverse shy. This will improve your view quite a bit. I usually use this with control layers or any group that I want to focus on. You can only isolate one group at a time, 
and that's why this button is separated from the other ones. To create a group, select one or more layers and hit the Folder button. It will automatically create a group with the chosen layers inside. Keep in mind that if you make a mistake, you can't just undo it. For example, if I include a layer that I don't even want in there, I'll have to use this Trash button instead. If you want to rename a group, select it and press Enter. The Refresh button refreshes the script. If you delete a layer that was inside a group, the script will show this warning icon, indicating that this layer doesn't exist anymore. It won't cause any errors, but you can just delete the layer from the group. To add a layer to an existing group, select it and hit this plus button. If you duplicate a layer that's inside a group, it will not automatically be added to this group. We often mention that layer storage doesn't add hierarchy. And that basically means three different things. The first thing is that it doesn't matter where your layers are located. Or in other words, you can move layers anywhere you want inside your project after adding them to a group. The second thing that's great is that layers can be in more than one group at once. So I could make, for example, another group where I want to include the top 10 layers, even though those layers are already in their respective groups. This offers you a great deal of flexibility in terms of organizing. And the third thing is that you can have layers from different comps in the same layer storage group. That is great if you want to stay in your main composition and want to toggle different elements on and off to see their effect on the bigger picture. Also, I usually make a trash group that's set to hide and invisible because I want to avoid deleting something that I might want to use again. The script will write an ID into the comment section of your layers if you add them to a group. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't ever use layer comments anymore if you want to use layer storage. As long as you don't delete the ID tag out of the comment, you're fine. It doesn't matter if it stays at the beginning, the end, or anywhere else. And that's it for the layer storage tutorial. I hope you found everything you needed, but if you have questions, please don't hesitate to use one of the ways to get in touch with us.